All right, please welcome Stephen Gallagher and all the other peoples that were introduced in the <laughs> preceding talk, uh, talking about how to make Fedora. Good morning. Uh, as introduced, I'm Stephen Gallagher. This is Marcelo Maslanova. Did I get that right this time? Ah. Uh, Maslanova. Uh, this is Phil Nersh. Josh Boyer. <laughs> uh, Josh Boyer and Matthew Miller. Uh, we are the FESCO liaisons for the uh, five working groups that uh, most of you were here for the previous talk, and Matthew covered those, so I'm not going to go into a great amount of detail. Also, if any of you are on the mailing list, you probably have heard about it by now. So uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to do a quick uh, cap of three minutes uh, recap for each of the uh, working groups, that what we've been working on since this, pro uh, this project uh, kicked off. And then we're going to go into a panel-style uh, question and answer session and hopefully merging into a bit of a brainstorming session. Um, I have a, a pirate pad, uh, etherpad link up here, which uh, captures uh, the, the, uh, the presentation and the discussion uh, that took place in the previous session. And I'd like to build on that uh, here today. All right, so um, why don't we start with the, the base design and uh, then I'll uh, then how the uh, environments and stacks go, and then I'll, uh, the server, workstation, and cloud. Great. All right. Thank you, Stephen. Um, so uh, because I only have three minutes, which is not a whole lot of time, I'll just try to be brief. Um, so the main point and objective of the base design, as we kind of at this point think it should be, is to uh, provide, I mean, we kind of did a mission statement. It's to provide a standard platform um, that provides functionality um, and frameworks and APIs that are, at this point, I think, and that's actually one of the few things where I, we had a discussion a, a little bit ago, uh, that all Fedora products require. And I think the all might be a little bit too much, especially if in the future we might have more products. But that's, I mean, this is all in flux at the moment. Everybody knows this. this is, we're still in, in the defining phase of this stuff. So that's the initial idea of the whole uh, base group. So um, a couple of things that came out of that were, um, first of all, that um, base in itself as a design um, is not supposed to be a product like the other ones. So we have a couple certain of, a couple of goals and like objectives that we want to achieve with base. Um, I'll come to those in, in a minute. Um, but in itself, base is not going to be a product. Um, we do um, provide the ins or want to provide the installer as a standard mechanism for all the products. So installer is going to be a part of it. Um, the uh, release engineering tools, therefore, should be a part of base, uh, we figured. And um, the minimal, the, the idea is also to keep it as small as possible so that cloud can benefit it, uh, most from it. Or other products like embedded spaces uh, eventually uh, can really work well. So a minimal install or a minimal set of packages is really, is really good. That led then uh, in conclusion to one um, initiative that we've already started now, which is a uh, build requirements re and requirements cleanup of um, the package set that we have, uh, at least around base. Because um, we want to have base also self-hosting because we that's a discussion we also had with, with others if base should be self-hosting so that base could build itself and would be self-contained and self-sustaining. If we try to do that right now, uh, you'd end up with about 1,800 packages, which sounds rather insane, and it is. There's like all kinds of weird stuff in there. So the build requirement cleanup would, um, w after first review that Harold Hoyer and me did, would get us down to about maybe a couple hundred packages. Without self-hosting, we're down to already 127 packages. The second thing that um, we just talked about over DEFCONF now the last couple of days was um, a script cleanup, post and pre-script cleanup uh, that we also want to do uh, start working on uh, because there are tons of them. Either we go the SUSE way, providing standard macros for a lot of the common uh, things, or uh, we just rip out a lot of stuff that we don't need at all. Um, I think a combination of both might be really good. But that's, again, all just in initiatives that come out of this. And... Uh, base in itself is going to be defined by the requirements of the products. So whatever they need and they have in common, we'll just provide. All right, that's about it. Thank you.
I'll give it over to Maricela. Thanks. So, environment and working, environment and stacks working group is also not a real product because we should do something for other products like define new technologies or test them before adding them into cloud or server. So we were thinking more about um, improvements of developers' life. So what we are missing, we were missing some features in build systems. So we'd like to cooperate with developers of Koji and Copper and improve the way how packages are built. We also spoke about documentation because if you ever tried to uh, search something on Fedora pages, you know it's not possible. So we'd like to also look at that. Uh, our working group is working with documentation, so maybe they have better plan than all of us. Uh, we were also looking at SCLs Stack collections because some products might need them for their work, for example, cloud. So we will be trying to work more with Fedora packaging committee and add them into normal repositories once in the future. For the meantime, we'd like to offer developers some, as was said, Fedora ugly repositories or Fedora <laughs> incubator repositories something for testing packages which are not good enough for main repository of Fedora. Um, I guess we would need more input from other products because for example, no one from us was looking at Docker and everyone is still speaking about it. So we should probably have some containers which would be tested in my working group. And we have a lot of stuff what we want to do, work on developer assistant, improvements of automation of packaging and Fedora reviews, but we need to specify what is most important for other products. And we are mainly waiting for your input. What should we start doing? All right, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, the Fedora server working group. We've come up with a mission that uh, effectively means that the Fedora server is, uh, wants to be the place to do uh, d development of what will be the next stable platform for Linux. And I don't just mean RHEL and CentOS necessarily. I want it to be the place where, ups where upstreams, uh, upstreams look at us and they get their changes in that they want to see in the next you know, three years on the various stable platforms out there. Uh, one of the things that we, we, we addressed, and we, while we were going through the planning, we had a lot of uh, debates as to where Fedora Server would fit uh, in comparison to Fedora Cloud. And uh, the first thing that we pretty much agreed on was that Fedora Cloud, uh, how many people here are familiar with the pets versus cattle um, mo uh, metaphor? Okay, not everyone. So uh, there are basically two modes of, uh, ser of servers that you can have these days. Uh, Cattle is the, uh, sorry, pets are, pets are the more traditional infrastructure way where you have a, you have a server and when it gets sick, you, you, you take it to the vet and you care for it and you try to do everything you can to prolong its life and make sure that your systems stay up. Uh, up. Uh, the, the, on the other hand, you now have this uh, new model of, in, the, in the DevOps world of, well, you've got a, you've got a server that's, that's not behaving itself. Shoot it in the head, make a hamburger and, get another, and buy another cow. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, so we, we pretty much decided early on that the, the goal of the Fedora Server Working Group was going to be to uh, to address the uh, the cattle uh, uh, sorry the uh, the pet side of the argument. We were going to deal with uh, hand, with handling the critical infrastructure that traditionally is or even going into the future we don't expect to be uh, to uh, adopt the cattle model. Something like. Uh, you're probably not going to have your domain controller in a uh, 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 running as a pet, as a ca as cattle. I keep getting you confused. I should really stop saying that. Um, you know, and and the, and these are some things that what we're going to do. I've got one more minute. I 
see you checking. Uh, <laughs> uh, what, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to be building a new concept called server roles uh, that is going to be a, at this moment, a little bit hand-wavy type of packaging that will allow us to deploy not just a set of packages that you would need to set up, a, uh, to set up uh, an infrastructure uh, service, but also an automated and API-driven uh, way to, uh, to configure that, uh, ideally using as many uh, best practice defaults as possible and giving the user uh, through this API hopefully the minimal set of uh, answers that they must give. So the goal there is that uh, we want to work with projects like OpenLMI and Cockpit so that we can, uh, so that we can have these uh, server roles deployable, just point at a machine and say, you're now a domain controller, you're now a, re a replica, you're, you're a my MySQL database. And I think, we're gonna, I, I think we've got some good ideas on how to proceed there. And my time is up, so I will pass it on to Josh. Okay, um, I'm the liaison for the Workstation Working Group, which is, um, it is an honor and a curse. <laughs> and, and, and I say that because I have the advantage of having the product that pretty much everybody is probably most familiar with, right? Fedora is traditionally a desktop distribution. A Workstation is a desktop product um, in a way. And I say it's an advantage because everybody kind of understands it and they have their own ideas and, and formulations behind what they think is a workstation. But it's also a very big disadvantage for the exact same reason. Um, because everybody has their favorite desktop environment and whether it's GNOME or KDE or XFCE, um, they're all good. None of them is better than another. But we need to have a product. And, and the, the idea behind workstation is <laughs> you want to ship something that is consistent it works for people that are actually developing things for server, for cloud, uh, and for whatever other future product we might need. And we want to have kind of a consistent set of APIs, make it a little bit more friendly to third-party developers, not necessarily ISVs, but certainly including them. Um, but Docker plays into it a little bit. Um, there's other ways you can do it. You can do containerized apps and things like that. But the foundation for all of that is having a workstation that actually works. And that's kind of what we're focused on. And we haven't, we have probably had the most debated product um, going forward so far. And it's, it's been good debate. There's been a lot of discussion, a lot of, you know, this is what I think we should do and this is what I think we should do. Uh, there's been some miscommunication, there's been some misunderstandings. So I'm hoping today that during this panel discussion and afterwards and, and further on, we can get the questions answered in a way that makes more sense to people going forward. Um, because really, I personally think Workstation is something that if you're going to develop the cool, exciting stuff that isn't the boring OS, you need a stable product. And so that's what we're really, that's the, the fundamental goal for Workstation, is to have a stable development platform for everything else that you actually want to do instead of maintaining your workstation. Okay, uh, so uh, I'm involved with the Fedora Cloud, and uh, in many ways it's kind of the opposite. It's the easiest one because we start with the minimal and then we're done. Uh, <laughs> Or at least that's what we've done so far. So uh, part of um, the Fedora Cloud product is to see where we can go beyond that. So uh, we probably are going to look at OS tree. We haven't talked a lot about that, but it's something that will be really interesting in that space because um, that's what the cool kids are doing over at CoreOS. They, and actually OS tree goes a ways beyond that to something that's better um, and more useful to people. So we'll probably be looking at that. I have to figure out exactly how that will fit in. Um, we haven't really talked about that a lot, but it's kind of a place where we have room to do that where we maybe don't so quickly in the rest of the distribution. Um, so, and then in addition to the, uh, the basic core uh, uh, cloud image, uh, we also want to provide some out-of-the-box solutions because that's kind of one of the themes here. So again, Docker, we're probably going to have a spin that is, and I don't know if I can say spins, but um, that's a, yet another labeling thing, but basically versions of the image that are tailored towards specific things. We're going to have one that has big data tools ready to go, so you don't have to build that all up with Java and all those things that you're going to need there. And something that, and this is probably where the, uh, where the OS tree thing will focus first, a Docker ready thing that has um, basically everything for Docker ready to go. And one of the things that's kind of cool about what we have in Fedora already is uh, 
we are going to really be the best platform for Docker because of everything Dan Walsh is doing with SE Linux. I don't know if you were at the talk there, but um, containers are not a security mechanism. You need to put a security ne mechanism on top of it. We will have that. Nobody else will. So that will be a, an exciting point that we have. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of in the rambling stage because all my interview is my previous talk, but I can answer <laughs> questions. <laughs> Okay, so at this point we've got uh, 25 minutes left to the discussion and uh, we're gonna, this is where we would really like to just start getting questions from out there. Uh, so if you, shout, if you uh, raise your hand, I'll call on you and repeat your question and we'll see what we can do. Colin? Okay, so the question, uh, I'm going to try to restate it, uh, was when we start talking about Ring 3, how much are we going to be talking about uh, our emphasis on uh, driving things towards our tradi uh, traditional uh, deployment mechanisms versus, uh, versus these uh, third-party on top of it mechanisms? Is that okay? Good. Yeah, uh, so uh, this kind of goes back to um, the Fedora mission thing of improving all of the software. Uh, and also that changing thing of effort versus reward for doing that. And I think that it is pretty much undisputed or indisputable that the world has decided that the amount of effort um, that's worth it to get into a distribution is just slightly above zero. So if it, uh, so, uh, and that basically means that we are largely left out of the conversation. Uh, maybe in that tiny little space there's some room for improving things. So. Uh, I think that when we're left out of the conversation, it doesn't matter how great our goals are for integrating things and improving things because uh, there's just no room to do it. So I think that uh, if we make it easier for things to get in, um, then people will start seeing the value again. Maybe some things will never get improved, but at least it will be part of the conversation and have a voice where we can make the software better if we feel like doing it. Um, I don't know if that completely answers the question, but I think it's kind of where I'm going on that. It's like... The question is, do you see us ever having Hadoop packages? And that's an easy one because the answer is we do. We do have Hadoop packages. Uh, and it was, was a lot of effort on the part of the people who did that. And so, yeah, uh, some people are still willing to do the effort for those things. So and we want to make that easier as well um, and try and make, uh, make the reward higher uh, if we can do that. Uh, and I think increasing the popularity helps with the reward too. All right, uh, so the question is, uh, is there a plan for Fedora to make it easier to install uh, closed source uh, proprietary software uh, similar to that which might be carried in RPM Fusion? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if you're talking about RPM Fusion free and RPM Fusion not free and non-free, which are uh, somewhat different. Uh, on <laughs> recently, this went to both a FESCO and a board vote, and the general consensus was that uh, this is not compatible with Fedora's uh, foundations, that it's not, uh, that uh, providing direct access to closed source software is not part of our responsibility. It is, however, not, it is, however, perfectly within the realm of possibility to make it easier for those third party companies to get, uh, to provide a mechanism to be put to install something on Fedora. So it is perfectly acceptable to work with say, uh, NVIDIA to actually have them ship a, a, a K-Mod that works, uh, but, it sh but it can't come from us. Does that, 
does that about sum up the uh, board? Yeah, I mean, so your question was basically a proposal that was driven forward through the workstation working group. Um, it, it was not unanimously saw, seen as beneficial to Fedora. Um, there are certain benefits, right? Especially because everybody knows that you install Fedora and the first thing you do is install RPM Fusion and things to actually use your computer as you want to use them. Not everybody does that, but a large majority of our users do it. And it's not, I mean, pretending that it doesn't happen isn't helping anything anywhere. Uh, so the workstation proposal was to ease that. Um, but because of the foundations and because of what Fedora has traditionally done for the past 10 years uh, in promoting free and open source software, um, like Steven said, the, 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 the board just didn't see that as being a good fit. Um, so it, it has allowed for the fact that, <laughs> again, it's, it's, it's a technicality almost, but say you go and you do a search for NVIDIA driver. Um, and if we have worked as a project with NVIDIA and they are pro possibly um, doing things in a more, certainly not open sourcing their driver, but doing things in a more user friendly way to get it installed, uh, we can come up with technology to click on a link and have it you know, be more discoverable and things like that. Uh, it's not something that Fedora is going to provide. We're not going to put it in um, like a software installer or anything like that, but working with those companies is, is certainly within the realm of possibility. I won't say that it won't necessarily be done, um, but it is something that has been brought up. Does that answer your question? So the comment was, um, or the question was, um, if we have now said that getting into the distribution is not cool anymore uh, and we're, we're making it easier to use uh, container technology and things like that to make it easier for people just to add stuff on top, are we kind of digging our own grave? It's a good question. Um, I kind of disagree with Matt a little bit on, on the fact that it's, it's not cool to be in a distribution anymore. I think it's, it's more a change in how you get into a distribution rather than people not caring. Um, back when Linux first started, it was very much a push kind of operation, right? You're writing free software, distributions are where people get free software, so they want to push that into the distribution. And today, there's so much software and people are so comfortable with free software that it's become a pull thing, right? The distributions go out and find the cool things and pull them in to make themselves cooler. It's not that the distros aren't cool, it's not that people don't use them and, and really have their own pet projects or, or pet uh, favorites, but I really do think that it's not digging your own grave to adjust to how the world has changed. It's, it's, it's maybe not making yourself the most important thing in the world, but it is certainly helping you to be more relevant going forward, and, and I'm willing to pass to whoever else wants to. Um, basically a comment on top of that. Um, just imagine if we would say, okay, we're or putting it putting it the blunt way, if we're making ourselves the hardliners here and say there's never ever until the end of the universe gonna happen that we will provide anything related to closed software or to ISV partners, it doesn't have to be proprietary or anything. If you look at the stuff that the board and the FASCO decided, it was already difficult enough for third party repositories to get in. Um, if we close ourselves up, um, you actively, and this is what's been happening over the last several years already, people will leave. Because a community that is not friendly, that is not inviting, that is not offering you something that you would want to have, 
um, is not going to be attractive to you, so you will leave. And the more people leave, it's a that downward spiral. The more people leave, the less attractive you will be, the less people will want to join you, the less people want to work for you, the less relevant you become, and at some point, you're alone. Do we want to be alone at some point with maybe 100 people at the end working on Fedora and using it? That's actually not something that I would be looking forward to, and I would move somewhere else, personally. Because then it's not, if something, if, if something is so irrelevant, why would I continue working and promoting this and, and trying to make the best of it? I would move somewhere where there's activity, where people thrive, where people can contribute, collaborate, work together, and move things forward, and make things easier for everyone. Um, I know this is a paradigm shift also for Fedora. Uh, it's absolutely. I mean, 10 years ago, it was different, as, uh, as Josh mentioned. There was really the, uh, the drive for, for open source projects to get into distributions. But nowadays, uh, that, that focus shifted. And I totally agree with it. That's a really good observation, I think. Um, so it's hard. Um, and it's to all of us to make that decision. It's not we deciding here, right? I mean. We are open. We are open for discussions. That's why we're here. We want to talk about this. And this needs to be something that um, a large body of the people working on Fedora today either say yes or no to. And if we say yes to um, more openness to other things, that's good. If we say no, sure. Um, that's fine, but then we have to, with all things, to consider to also deal with the consequences of that, as everything, and with everything in life that you do. You have to deal with the conse consequences of your actions. We really decided that it is not interesting to get into distributions anymore, and so, uh, um, I mean, uh, you, we're working here from a premise that I'm not even sure we can take for a given. Uh, 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 all this, uh, all the this desktop software, KDE software, GNOME software, etc. Their goal is definitely to get into distributions, and th still, uh, as far as I know, and that's what the Fedora users are using primarily. I mean, sure, there are tons of projects in. Don't show small Ruby and uh, Python and Java uh, projects on GitHub, but that's not really the kind of, of software uh, that's, that the typical Fedora user is going to use. I mean, a lot of the stuff is even just written f by developers for developers as libraries and things like that, and uh, that's things that a web developer is going to use, but everyone else who's using Fedora is not going to be interested in web development libraries. All right, um, so I'm going to try and take this, uh, and I'm, I'm not going to necessarily address every single point. There, was a, there were a lot of questions in there. But uh, one of the things I've been seeing is that while public perception is that the d distribution is no longer interesting, that it's commoditized, uh, I don't think that that's necessarily the truth, and I think that it's probably going to take another year or two for people to recognize that, oh, all this cool stuff we're doing, well, all of it relies on a whole bunch of interesting stuff being done in the kernel. It, re it relies on a bunch of interesting stuff being done at the, at the various platform layers. And I think, uh, you know, th projects like OpenStack and, uh, and CloudForms and, uh, and all of these, uh, these new hot technologies. I'm sorry. Oh, and Docker. Docker. I have to make <laughs> Docker. Uh, gotta, gotta, gotta hit my, uh, my quota. Docker, 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 Docker. Um, <laughs> All of these technologies require significant changes to the platform layer that just people, uh, you know, the general perception is, well, it's magic. That, that just happens. And I think what's, gonna, what's going to happen in the next couple of years is that a, a, as these things get more popular and they get more used and they start requiring more, th more changes on the platform, I think that the interest is going to circle back around a bit. And I think we want to be positioned as the right place to make those changes. We want to be the place people come first to get uh, to 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 enable you know the open stacks and the dockers of the world docker docker So I just want to add quickly that uh, things like uh, KDE and GNOME and the desktop software like that, there's definitely a layer of things that we definitely want to get into the distribution. Um, and I don't think that that being shipped separately 
is valuable at all. So we definitely still want that, and, and that's not something we are interested in breaking, I don't think. We want to keep encouraging that. It's beneficial for everybody. Um, but I think that we do also want the people, the developers who are working on those Ruby and other things to be able to participate in Fedora because, again, going back to what our mission is, our mission is not just to make that tiny little distribution that has the platform and then we're done. We want to have, we want to include people who are doing things on top of that platform because that's what we need to do in order to actually fulfill our greater mission. <laughs> and just as a one quick last comment here, if you look at the um, last few, like, five or a couple of projects that um, really gained a lot of momentum over the last couple of years, um, where did those happen? Did Docker come out of Fedora? No, it didn't. Did OpenStack come out of Fedora? No, it didn't. Um, there are actually quite a few technologies in the last couple of years that did not happen and were not incubated in Fedora. Why is that? And that's a question we need to ask our members. And is there something that we're, where we're um, not allowing these kinds of things to happen anymore? And what is this? Is it the, um, the difficulty to get into Fedora as a developer these days? Is it because we don't have third-party repositories? Is it because our pack packaging is so complicated and that RPM and YUM sucks? What, what is it? What are the reasons? Why, why w were these projects not being done with us? Or is it just marketing? It could just be a marketing issue as well. So we need to ask ourselves these questions, and we need to find the answers to those. So, um, and once we know those, then we can work on solving them and see where, what we need to do about it. And that's, I think, the question we need to ask ourselves, too. Yeah, so uh, maybe I have a kind of a different question related on how we will do it. So how we are going to scale to deliver Fedora.next. And I see two important things, like improving tooling automation and attract more people, like contributors, to do it. I would like to maybe hear your thoughts on it. Man, if we knew the answer to that, we'd be done. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start. Um, we don't know. That's the answer to your question. I mean, that's exactly what we're trying to work through right now, and it's a hard question. Um, automation in a lot of areas, particularly QA and RelEng, are going to be key to getting this done. Uh, and part of the reason why we aren't having a Fedora 21 release, i got to make sure I say this right, the absolute soonest it will ship is August. It will probably not ship in August. Um, is to give the QA team time to play catch up. Uh, they've, they've been so focused on spinning their wheels, testing the releases as we churn them out, that they have no time to do the automation work. So right now, they actually, they're working on those tools. Uh, Relinge, I think, Dennis, I don't know if Dennis is in here, but he, um, he's looking to do automation for Relinge, so we don't have that. Uh, attracting more people is a very good question, and I think, I think a lot of the product proposals in Fedora.next is to both generate some introspective, you know, are we still relevant, how, we, how do we fix that? But it also is, it's kind of exciting, right? It's attracting some people that I haven't seen show up before or I haven't seen show up in a very long time. And I'm hoping as we go forward and we, we start producing some of these products that we get more people, you know, they're like, oh, they have a server platform. I'm interested in servers. And then they show up and help, right? It's, it's not, it's kind of a chicken and an egg problem with the products because you don't know if they're going to attract anybody or drive people away. Um, but I think that's part of the reason why we're trying to do it. It's a very good question, and we need to figure it out. You're right. Uh, I'd like to add, too, that while this is uh, – I have some other ideas that are, I think, necessary but not sufficient um, that, invo uh, that involve things like uh, reducing, uh, reducing the, the, the hurdles to actually becoming part of the Fedora project. I mean, right now, uh, as Matthew addressed in his earlier talk, it is an incredibly – uh, high hurdle to get a, a package into Fedora right now. Our, our packaging guidelines are, for all good and right reasons, extraordinarily strict. And there's, there's no single one I would say, well, we shouldn't do that. But at the same time, it basically restricts the set of packagers to the ones who, were, uh, to the ones who have been following the generation of those guidelines from the beginning of Fedora. 
So I think that I think that the idea is uh, like like Matthew was describing our Fedora Ugly or our Fedora Incubator uh, and the Copers are ways that we can start getting people to remember Fedora as relevant and start encouraging them to, you know, encouraging upstreams that are doing something interesting to at least try and work with us in Coper, because if we can get them there, we've gotten we've at least gotten them a place where Fedora users can easily get their software, and that, and that, we hope, will produce a feedback loop into wanting to get their software into the default Fedora, so users don't have to take that extra jump. So I think that that's a step in the right direction, and I think that all the buzz that we're generating about Fedora Next, uh, even though uh, I've noted that you know on LWN and Pharonix, most of it is wrong, <laughs> um, it's still ge it still is generating interest, and I, I've noticed that I don't know if anybody else has noticed this, but the con the, the amount of mail going through de uh, Devel list has tripled. It seems like in the last in the last few months. I mean, people are back. To, well, I mean, yes, there have been flame wars, but flame wars don't happen unless people are caring about something. So we we have definitely brought interest, and even if you know, if ultimately we decide that these are the wrong ways to go, we've had that discussion, we've had that engagement, and these are people that will have had their say to the point that they will probably stick around. So even just this buzz generation, I think, is a step in the right direction for bringing people back to Fedora. Does anyone else uh, want to have anything? I have a, well, I will put a question. So, uh, not sure if there's a question or an answer, but I, I think uh, forking and pull requests work pretty well for GitHub, at least for projects which are alive. So, I don't know if we shall be afraid of uh, um, forking packages or um, being more open to packages uh, coming to Fedora. It's just about the process of filtering and uh, picking up maybe the pull request. Um, I don't know, maybe having GitLab for, for all packages, for specs, for I've seen some Puppet mentioned that maybe moving configuration into Puppet. So having the Puppet in GitHub, GitLab, I think that maybe I think helpful. Um, yes. I think so too. I mean, it's, that's one of the. Um, if you look at the base design and the things that we want to do there with the cleanup of the, um, like, uh, the scripts and everything, um, one of the points that um, I think Hans also mentioned that before in the talk before is uh, noticing that we do basically do two things in packages at the moment too, right? We do deliver software, but we also deliver configuration. And sometimes the postscripts do some configuration on the system. Now, that's combining basically two fairly distinct functionalities into one pretty much static and solid piece, which is uh, unfortunate to in, a, in a large degree. So, I mean, that's something that we definitely should look at. And um, where I think... Um, Colin's idea with OS, OS tree and the user at C and at C was making extraordinarily good sense. Where you would have a default set of configuration, where if you would have an empty at C, you'd still have a working system, and anything that you would modify then, or as, as a sysadmin would then do in the system, would then be tracked. I mean, I, I mean, I used to be a sysadmin in, in my former jobs, and. I would have cried tears if I would have had that possibility back then. If something changed in the system, being able to go back to a different state in the configuration, or if a new software was deployed or updated that had a different default configuration, that that would get merged automatically by the system when I install the software. I mean, how cool is that? That is so stuff that's really great. And regarding and coming back to the packages um, and packaging, um, also, having, again, and combining that with the automation, I think one of the really cool things what we could and hopefully can do at some point would provide either templates or um, things that would create out of a GitHub project a ready-to-build spec file, which would comply to the FPC guidelines. I mean, that would make it so easy for anyone on GitHub to just push their package to Fedora and build it. I mean, they would not have to touch a spec file usually. And I mean, maybe a small modification here and there are use 
change logs or whatever. But, and this is all, a lot of this stuff is not rocket science, but one of the big issues I think we will be facing and that we, which we definitely need to address is that um, we need resources either coming from here, from the groups here, from the community, from other people to actually do this work because there's a lot of work that needs to be done. It's not rocket science, but somebody needs to do it. And it's not going to fall from the heaven. So, yeah. All right, we have one minute left. Uh, we can take one remaining question. Um, so we've seen in this session that there are a lot of common misconceptions or just questions about what Fedora Next is. And my question is, what do you think where this comes from, where this, uh, yeah, being just a little slightly uncom unfamiliar or uncomfortable about this, where this comes from, and what do you think we can do about it? All right, so I'm going to accept a large amount of the blame for this because I apparently have been a really terrible blogger as far as uh, <laughs> as far as how I've been communicating the things that we're trying to work on. Uh, I, I, I realized uh, uh, very recently uh, that Adam Williamson put up a, a blog recently where he said where he had an epiphany where he suddenly realized all the things I thought I had been saying, yeah. <laughs> um, and that that was kind of eye opening for me at least is that we. People were really interpreting uh, from, the w from the way that uh, we were talking about it that we were fundamentally changing and splitting, uh, we were ba that we were basically branching Fedora into three different projects. And that was really not the point that we were trying to make at any time. And so I, 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 I accept a large amount of the responsibility for that. And I think we need to do a better job of uh, communicating in the future. We're over time, but I'm going to talk anyways. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, <laughs> um, so I think this a lot goes to the problem of communication in Fedora in general, where we don't really have a centralized view of what's going on in Fedora right now. And a lot of the new things that we do that are cool and meant to bring people together, like Fedora badges and Fedora magazine, actually end up being yet one more place for things rather than bringing things together. So um, I hope that's a sort of a parallel track of things we can work on in communication so that everything um, comes together. One of the ideas would be nice, there used to be a Fedora weekly news, that guy there did it, um, and it was really, really helpful to just be able to skim that if you're, especially if you're a casual contributor to it, and so one of the things that I am not going to do because I would be terrible at it, but hope somebody else will, is something that's just like a weekly post of the top five things that are interesting in Fedora this week. Yeah, uh, w whatever, you know, hi highlighting some of the things. Um, it, would, it would be a great opportunity for somebody who think, who is good at that kind of thing to, um, to do that. Yeah, you know, if we want to have multiple people doing that, that would be good. Um, and then, Denise, you've had your hand up for a while here. Do you want to add anything? So what do you guys think Fedora 21 is going to look like? I know there's a lot of work for Ever. QE. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, run while you can. Uh, I mean, I can see that a lot of the this is going to be long term. And I'm looking forward to seeing what the roadmaps are like for each of your five areas. Um, but I'd love to know what you think you can get done in the Fedora 21 time frame and how you plan to help everybody understand the things that we're looking for volunteers to work on. I'll just add that we're really over time, so this is officially over. I'll leave the mic on, second but... Uh, five, second five seconds? Uh, the five second answer okay, is so that, 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 that offer, providing that is exactly the next month's goal. Uh, that is what all the working groups are targeting for uh, the next month to actually deliver. And so uh, the other thing is, in this room next is the uh, talk about copper, which is the build system. And then in D1, there's a talk about um, automation. So um, if you're interested in helping with that part or just learning about where it's going, um, both of those rooms are really great places to be. Next. Oh, and FESCO, nomina FESCO elections are ongoing. Please vote.
tady o sobě nic nemá, tak nevím, co to je. On rovný na ten kopr.